Hey, welcome to Puck TV. This is Jadrian. We are running our Thursday night uh, multiple housing visits and a, a dungeon run. We just got done with our first visit to a maze. And I'm going to go ahead and step on through the portal out. And go back to South Kinos. And I'll just show you here real quickly. We just got done visiting a maze. And if you ever want to know how to get to some of the different areas, some of the special housing areas in South Kinos, it's right here. If you go into the South Kinos area with the tower, and then right in between these homes, here's the portal. Now I know. All right, now we have our friend here in the pug pen with us, the gamer me. Yeah, I turned into a rat from our last maze visit. And I'm still a rat, so I'll just I'll just stick a rat, whatever. Whatever. Really deep down they're kinda cute. And they gave me a patch. Oh no, they gave me a monocle. So I'm good. I at first I thought it was a patch, and I was like, Oh, he must have poked his eye out drinking cocoa that had a spoon in it and he poked his eye out, so Mmm. My all right, so what we're gonna do is we got gamer, uh, the gamer me with us. I almost said the gamer rat. We got the gamer rat with us, and I have grouped up with him. I'm not even sure how you pronounce that properly, so I'm just gonna say Deuce. If I'm wrong, he'll correct me. And I'm gonna go and take a look at his guild hall. All right, so where? He's in the group chat. You can't see it. I've I've hidden it with my picture. All right, Deuce. Where is your guild hall? How do I get there? And we'll show off your guild hall to the world. Let's see if if he can guide me in. Let's see if he can guide me in. Alright. I am good. I hope that's not a problem. He's probably figuring out how to get me there. Especially if they're evil, then we might have a problem. Just look around here while he figures out how to get me in. Oh, look at that big golden statue. I have not heard one of these statues talk in a long time. Alright, he says, okay, join our guild first. Okay, I can do that. Send me an invite. I will be gilded. Alright. He says, um, after I join the guild, then I can use the guild portal at his house. So that's fine. Yeah, so send me a guild invite. I will join your guild, and then we'll get to your house, and then I can just portal in. That's okay with me. I can do that. Uh, Obram says he caught the statue talking the other night, so they are still active. I just remember they, they used to talk all the time, especially when they did the... Uh, 
when they had the introduction island. Uh, man, it's been so long. I can't remember what this special island was. They took them out. But they had a statue on the on the Kino side, like smack dab in the middle of the starting area. And it talked like all the time. It had the same speech, but it was like on repeat. But it just talked all the time. All right, let's learn about guilds. Welcome to Guild Life. You can discover all you need to know about guilds by clicking guilds. Or not. Oh, there it is. Help. Never mind. We're done. Uh -huh. All right. So, do they have like a special I can warp to you something? Ah, oh, he's in South Kinos. Where you at? At least I think it said South Kinos. Sixty-seven. Yeah, don't mind me. I just running around. There he is. All right. Pa Pow. See. Gary Me says in the chat, we're casual guilds, so your time can level a bit to when you get uh, some free time. Well, good. I'm glad you're casual. <laughs> All right. Do you have a house here at this portal? Uh, Obram says that it was the Isle of Refuge. That was the name. It's been, uh, it's been a long time. And did the, what was the one for? Didn't did Freeport have a different name as well? Like they had their own, Hallis. Oh, Hallis. I wonder if I can go back to Hallis. Yeah, that's right. We went into your house, Deuce, in um, in Hallis. So I wonder if I can teleport back there. I wonder if I have a recall. Let's find out. Let's see where this takes me. Otherwise, I'll have to just port around till I get there. But it should take me somewhere near Hallis. Hallis. L. This Hallis. All right, so I'll run up to Hallis. And then uh, Oban says the Queen's Colony was the Kino side. I can't remember the Freeport one. Well, I can't believe it's been, was it like eight years that EverQuest 2 has been out? Almost eight years. This came out, I think it was October, in October, November of 2004, I believe. And we had it when it first came out and just absolutely loved it. And I remember when trying to zone after you play the game for a certain amount of time, it had a real bad memory buffer problem. And it got to the point where the all the zoning you did was just chug your system down and eventually just crash your machine. Ah, oh, good times. <laughs> remember all kinds of stuff. But always has enjoyed the game. I remember the first time we went and got our one in room and thought that was the most amazing thing that this had housing. And housing back then is completely different than housing now today. Um, it was very rudimentary, but still more developed than any other game that's come out that has had housing. So that's always been a really strong suit for this game. I remember you had to do your shop inside your house and you had to leave your guy logged in your home in order for you to sell stuff. You couldn't go adventuring with your stuff on the market. It was just it had good stuff and a lot of inconveniences that went with it. So fun times though. Yeah, Oberon says he remembers those days too. Yeah, it's it's a remarkable game. It I wanna say it's completely different than when it first came out, but it's still EverQuest too. Um I remember when the adventure packs came out you had to buy so I mean we snatched up everything we could we we bought the split paw knoll one when that came out and then we bought the uh, the island of Mara when that came out I think 
think they also had the vampire ones. I think altogether they made three chronicles that you had to buy. So there was like a vampire one. Um, in Thundering Steps, they had these knolls that would come out and grab you. That the split paw pack, I think, is called, or something like that. We bought that one, and then the Island of Morrow, which was the martial arts stuff. And then after that, they started releasing all those kind of big updates for free. And I remember when we first got Deserts of Flame. Oh man, memories, 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 memories. All right, Deuce, I gotta, I gotta know where to go. Where do I find your homes? So we can warp into your guild hall. Looks like you just got around here somewhere. If I remember, there's like a whole separate section for housing, and this might be it. Raven's Roost. Alright. So I think I'll be able to find you in the housing zone. The only thing I hated about the game, and I'm so glad they changed was when it very first came out you want if you wanted to play a paladin you had to start it was like something that's like a like a warrior and you played it for like five levels or so and then you changed your character class to like a guardian and then the guardian depending if you were good at evil that was a subset of either the shadow knight or the paladin so you had to do like a couple career changes till you got to the final class that you wanted and that was cool like the first time i played but then when I wanted to make another character and I had in my mind specifically a necromancer or something like that, it sucked having to play through all these baser classes to get to the one I want. And then you had to buy like entirely new skills as you trade it up. Okay, he says it's by the trade skillers. Well, these look like trade skillers. No, maybe they're not. Here's some trade skillers. Uh, no, that's a bar. Hmm, where are trade skillers in here? Oh, those are quest people. Let me zoom in. That's the bank. There I am. Taylor. Maybe that's some trade skillers. Ravens, the North Merchant. Okay, maybe it's down here. I'll find it. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Oh, oberon has got this totally, totally memorized way better than me. So he said Fighter was 1 through 10, Crusader was level th uh, 11 through 19, and then Paladin was 20 plus. Oh, and then he told me left. <laughs> He's trying to guide me in, and I'm just wandering around. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was a pain. The only cool redeeming thing... Let's try this one first. The only cool redeeming thing about um, a paladin when it first came out... Nope, it's not this one. Was you got a, a horse spell. <laughs> so you didn't get a mount right away, but you got a spell to summon a mount, which was very, very cool. Um, but it only gave you like a 10% run speed or something terrible. And if you played like a thief class, your built-in run speed was like way, way better than what you could get as the Paladin's mount. So it was like a real kick in the butt. Hey, Deuce, I'm just um, trying to figure out where you are. Should I follow you? Is it in here? All right. Nope. I was going completely wrong. Past it. <laughs> yeah, I don't steer too good. Oh, there it is. Okay, here it is, here it is. Visit. There we go. Alright. What fun this is. <laughs> I know. I can only imagine people tuning in to watch something cool and all you got is me running around lost. Eh. You get what you pay for. So just be thankful you don't have to pay a subscription to watch me because then you might feel gypped. Alright, so he's got himself. Ooh, is this it? Oh. Hey, it's a guild door. Here I go. We're the merciful ones. Good. Mm, 
Wes brings back memories. Getting like the large five room Freeport homes we thought was amazing. They, di they didn't have guild halls when we started out either, so we just had to buy like a big five room mansion. And you can only have one house per person, so one person got to be the designated guild. Oh, man. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give this all due respect. All right, so I'm going to zoom in so you don't have to look at the back of my Rotonga head. And now I'm just going to walk through and view stuff. So this is the guild hall. So this is the Gamer Me's guild hall. So he's he's requested that I come and check it out. And I think we've talked about this a couple times. I've gone through and I visited his house in Hallis once and then he's, you know, said, "Hey, come check out our guild hall." And so that's where we are. So I'm going to hide my UI, put myself in walk, and we'll go ahead and give this a walk through. So this is after I first come into the the doors. And I just love checking out the guilds. Now, the one thing is, I don't know if this is a... Uh, Deuce, do you know if this is a guild, like, tier 1 or tier 2 guild hall? Which, there he is right there. That's the gamer me. I just call him Deuce. Oh, if he's talking in chat, i got to turn this on just in case he... If you know. Tier 2. All right. And it does make a difference. My wife's guild, they just got their tier 2, and uh, it adds some different rooms down below. And it, it doesn't really change the layout, but it does add rooms. So so here's a huge aquarium. Now, I, I personally am a fan of large aquariums. They even got a place where I can sit and look. So I've always enjoyed the fact that people can put, like, these huge aquariums. Oh, man. I don't think I fought one of those. Look at this, he's got trash on him. He's so big, swimming around, he just collects stuff. So we got a huge turtle. Octopus thing. You got sharks. Can I go in there? Ooh. Hoo hoo. I'm in. Oh, I didn't even notice that at first through the water. I know. I shouldn't be in here. Hi. Hello. Look, I'm swimming with the fishes. Ah, oh, I love aquariums. Okay, I'll get out. I know, realistically, you, you should not be able to walk through the glass of your, your aquarium. I cheated, but I love aquariums. All right, so after we come in, what do we have here? Okay, so I have to turn my chat on a little bit. A rat in the water, go figure. Yeah, I'll I'll leave this up so I can I can see stuff. Okay, so we've got here the guild mender. Okay, so we're gonna pick this direction and go. I like how they put sand on here. This gives it a very very much a, a desert of flame feel. They got the tents. There's my mender. And this and it just reminds me of Desert of Flame because Desert of Flame when you come out and you cross the bridge they've got alligators and stuff just kinda in the starting area. I always thought that was funny. Go to Desert of Flame, and you see the peasants, and the peasants are like level 50-something. And I remember you can go there before you're level 50-something, but you run up there, you're like level 24, and you've got like a couple plat, but these people are apparently poor, and they're like level 50-something. It's like, you know, if you just like left the DOF and like went down to Antonica, you could make pretty good money because you could really clear out Thundering Steps and, you know... I tried to tell those people, but they never listened to me. They just hung out up there in Maj Duel. Strategist. So we're just making our way through here. Ah, so then we have a transition. So we go from like Desert of Flame to Antonica. So just checking out. It's kind of like the themes. I like theme rooms and theme dungeons, so it's kind of nice to see the guild hall kind of broken down into theme sections. 
I'm sure that must get to smelling though, having the horse stables inside. But this kind of makes me feel like an Antonica type of layout there. Got your druid rings. Ooh. Wonder if I can get up there. Uh, and I missed this earlier, Oberon pointed out too, that Desert Flame is where they introduced climbing. Yeah, we thought that was kind of neat. To get up to certain places, you had to climb the, the mountain sides. In fact, I think climbing was unique at the time for MMOs. I think I think EverQuest 2 was one of the first ones to have like climbing up mountain sides. And I, I won't say no other MMO had climbing, but I don't think they had it to the scale that EverQuest 2 did because they had some places where you had to really climb high to get and the, the scale was, was pretty immense. Portal Wizards. Venture Ritz. They even made their own ship. Where to? Oh, man. I tell you what. Tonight has just been a nostalgic night for me. If you're new to EverQuest 2, then you might not remember the Isles of Refuge very well. But just starting off the game was cool way back in the day because you actually started out on a ship that got like attacked and then the ship makes port at the island and they drop you off so you can uh, begin your adventure. That was kind of cool. Or at least <laughs> maybe it didn't. I don't know. I For some reason I thought it did. I remember that. Maybe that was a different game. <laughs> and if everybody did, didn't have it, then they should have, because it was kind of cool. And then Gamer Me says, Your computer looks so much better than mine, Sniff. Well, shouldn't. I don't see how. You 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 read off your your stats you got like a monster machine so you should should have something good i'm not sure what looks better okay so i came that way let's see let's go this way so i'm just wandering now this is the hall of heroes nice i love seeing different artworks that people get put in now th uh, how'd they do that? How'd they put that around the picture? That looks cool, because I don't... It must come that way. That's awesome. That's like old EverQuest 1 artwork. I tell you what, I would... I never really got into EverQuest 1, but I always dug the artwork. <laughs> but... I know my dad, he... My dad and my mom, they played it. He said that's a card loot. Yeah, so it must come wrapped like that. That's pretty cool. I'll just tell you a quick little story about the uh, the Jadrian family. My mom and dad, they played EverQuest 1 for a long time, especially my dad. He he had like all the experience. I, I don't remember where he stopped, but I'll tell you though, it's interesting, interesting story. He used to smoke, and EverQuest 1, um, oh, Deuce says it could have been a vet reward. Anyway, my dad, he used to smoke, and... EverQuest 1 had, I don't know if they still do, but it had an extremely long recovery time to like get your mana back from memorizing spells or scribing your spells. took a really long time. Okay, there is the entrance, so I'm kind of around the back. So anyway, it took so long for him to rest, and if you didn't have the user meditate skill, it took forever to get your health and mana back. But even using your skills, it took so long that my dad was actually able to like go do a couple fights, kill a boss or something like that, go smoke a cigarette, sometimes even two cigarettes, and then come back and play. Cause it, so we always had something to do during that downtime because it was extensive. This is very cool. And then um, he stopped smoking, and that's when he quit EverQuest 1 because he realized he was bored. He got tired of waiting so long for his health and mana to regenerate. So I don't know if they've sped it up, but 
a few years ago, it, it took a long time to recover. So anyway, just a little story. So I love coming and seeing how they how people put in, like, because I've seen like these tapestries and things before used in like homes on a smaller scale. So I always think it's cool to come in and see like if people put like shrines and just how they set things up. So very cool. We get the seating, so it's like a, a hall, of, hall of worship, or a hall of, of, uh, or just a dance stage. Who knows? So now we should have some downstairs area pretty soon. So let's just run back through the hall of heroes. Oh, look at that! I love seeing the statues and the busts. It's kind of like walking through a Hastings and going down their tile, their toy aisle, and looking at their different collectible dolls. I'm stuck. All right. Wait. Nope. It's like, why do they got a big snake right there? Check the upstairs. Oh, where is the upstairs? Was it back there? I was going to go downstairs. I didn't see the upstairs. And that doesn't quite go all the way up. You want me to go upstairs first? All right, here we go. Let's go upstairs. Then Obam says, yeah, you're remembering correctly. So, okay, they did have a boat thing. They had a boat tutorial. Yep, they sure did. They had it like you went on, you talked to like the captain and then the first mate, and then you had to talk to a couple people, and then they had like a quest like kill a couple rats, and then eventually you got attacked, and um, yeah, it was it was it was neat, and then it dropped you off at the island. So, oh, and then that was cool too. All the spoken dialogue, not all the quests and people have spoken dialogue, but uh, in the beginning they did. It was very very cool. They got Rudolph. Now, this is cool. I love this forested area. Now see, I see some steps. So let's take the steps. Check out the deer. Yeah. Check out Rudolph. Oh, this is cool. Don't fall. Don't fall, rat boy. Oh. Neat. Oh, this is always scary. Oh, but what'd they do? Oh, look, look, look. You can come up to the top. This almost feels like they need to, to finish it off. Like, I guess I've hit the ceiling. Can't go any higher. That'd be cool if you could go up and if they could put, like, a little uh, uh, platform or something to hang out. Obama says it's better now, so he's probably talking about the health regen and stuff. Yeah, so I request one. That's just my little story. My dad, he he used to play it quite a bit. And I tried recently, and I just couldn't figure it out. It's too complex. <laughs> I know it's probably silly to say. I, I didn't give it much of a chance, but it was like I came in. I said, yeah, this don't play anything like EverQuest 2, and then uninstalled it. So it was not very fair of me. I just... You get used to playing something, and if it's just way out of whack, it was just, yeah, I'm, I don't want to take the time to learn. All right, let's 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 go downstairs. So this is very cool. I always like when people bring, put like a forest in. So let's check out the downstairs. Oh, the skylight, yeah, that's a good name for it. And then Obram says, yeah, mechanics are quite different from EverQuest 2. I do like, for me, I like the fact that skills actually seem to matter more. Like here, I know you have skills and they get, you know, rated up to five points per level, so on and so forth. I just never really felt like the skills actually mattered. I mean, I'm sure they do mathematically behind the scenes, but in EverQuest, uh, back when we played, it, it really did feel like it. Okay, so I'm going to, I just come down, I'm going to go ahead and hit hit this way first. Especially when it came to like sense direction. See, I hear EverQuest 2, you get, I think I turned it off, but you had a compass. Whereas in EverQuest 1, when I played, first played, you didn't have a compass. You actually had a sense heading direction button you had to click and build your skill. And, it, and your skill in the beginning sucked, so your compass was like always wrong. And then as you got your skill developed, it would actually start giving you accurate, you know, north, south, east, west. Little things like that, but it, it really felt like skills made 
a big difference. And so whenever you saw that skill point advance, it was like, yes, I'm that much better. Your intelligence mattered because the higher your intelligence, the better, the easier it was to learn skills. And I just don't feel that with this game at all. It really doesn't seem to matter because once you start getting equipment and gear, then you know that that just kind of takes up and makes over for skills. It's like all in the stats and gears, not so much in your skill. Uh, Yeremi says, "Ah, oh, the memories are EverQuest, Blackborough trains, just trains in general in that game." Oh, I love coming into trophy rooms and seeing the tapestries and the weapons, your legends and lores, dwarven work boots. Let's see what else we got. Oh, and the Kelethin. I believe they had an even more dangerous Kelethin. Oh, hello, Achievement Council lady. And I think their Kelethin in the first EverQuest was more dangerous than the one here. That was a dangerous place to do a drunken race. Even the classes play a little bit differently. But, yeah, you know, it's still a good game. It it was good for what it did. It just had different mechanics, and I'm a big graphics fan, and that's probably the biggest reason why I don't play EverQuest, even though it's free to play now. It's just the graphics don't do it for me anymore. Much prefer the EverQuest 2 graphics. It looks like this is where we can do all of our crafting. This is exactly the type of crafting hall my wife likes. Um, she has a friend that they got their Tier 2 guild, and there's actually like a spot down here where I think this is I think this is the room. But what they did was they put different crafting in each room. So you come down and like, you know, the tailor is in this room and and it's all spread out and but she prefers it the way this is where you just put it all in like one room so it's easier to do your crafting. Oh, like a, I want to say library, I just don't see a whole lot of books, but a library of, well, it's a start to a library, they got some of their books in here. Uh, Oberon says, Kithakor by night. <laughs> yeah, definitely way more dangerous. But it even brings back, like, okay, so coming back to EverQuest 2 here, I remember, so like when crafting first came out, their crafting was way more complicated than it is now, too. Uh, it still has retained some of the similar feelings. Looks like an art room and wine. Oh, just to hang up here. I like lighting fires and then walking away. There we go. Grab a bottle of wine, curl up next to the fire, play some piano. But I remember when it first came out, crafting sucked. Like, I used to hate it because, like, if I played my weapon maker, I could only make some of the stuff, and then it required somebody else. I, I forget how it used to be, it, the exacts. But it was like one person could not craft their all their own stuff. You Your crafting relied on other people. So I could make, like, part of my sword, but then I needed, like, a carpenter who made like the hilt or the leather straps or something silly and so if you progress too far and the people that you needed that were higher tier like you weren't on you technically could not do any more crafting because the people you needed to make the other parts you needed weren't on and so they finally really relaxed the crafting a whole bunch well I don't want to get kicked by that guy I'm just a short little Rotonga and that guy is like kicking right through me Let's see. I got one other way to go here. We didn't go this way. Boy, I forgot how big these are. Guild halls are huge. Oh, man. You know what? And speaking of guild halls, 
Okay, now we're back. Now we're back. All right, so let's just continue wandering here. I tell you, my wife, her friends got mad. So they just got done building up their guild to hall. So here I come through, and to me, like this is huge, and this is, you know, got their trophies. It's really well decorated. Um, but they just released like another prestige home, and I don't know exactly where it's at, but it looks like it's set in the Maj Duel area. But it's like a house in area. But it's like they took a whole city block of Maj Duel and made that a home. It is humongous with all the different places you can go. It's like bigger than a guild hall. And they were kind of mad because they spent so much on a guild hall when they could have just bought that city block. So what you guys have here, though, is like kind of like that with your desert area, your Antonica area. So you've, you've got this really set up pretty cool. I really like this. Did I miss anything? I've gone downstairs. Missed more house estate. We can check that out. Sure. Let's let's put that up. Let's let's go take a look at that. Can we get to it from here? It's empty. Oh. Well. Never mind then. <laughs> I'm okay with this. All right. Well, I tell you what. Let me let me go ahead and leave permafrost. Let's see. Do you have anybody on Antonio Bell as well, the gamer me? Oh, uh, and Obram's saying it. It's like Hall of the Master or something like that. Use the port on South Kinos. Yeah, we'll tour that another time. Let me take a look at the time. Oh man. I spent a lot of time hanging out with you guys. Let me do the dungeon run. I'm going to head over back to Antonia Bale. And Obram, you said you had a level 20 person. So we're going to find a dungeon and just kind of run through that real quick. Yeah. Okay. Gamer me. He says he can work on it. Well, you can probably read it right there. So, you know, and I encourage, I, that's an open invitation to anybody. If you want to come and run a dungeon with us or something fun like that. Antonia Bale, if you can get a level 20 character, you can come hang out with us, and that would be totally cool. I don't, I don't have a particular dungeon in mind, so we can find one. I, I think it's on Antonia Bale. I got one, so you can at least watch it. So I'm going to go ahead and camp out here. Let's see. I keep trying to hit my escape key. Let me camp out. All right, Deuce. Gamer me, thank you for showing your guild hall. Let's go out to the character select here. I'm going to hop into Antonia Bale real quick. And there is a dungeon. No, I think it's a house. Yeah, shoot, it's a house on a dungeon. So i got to find us a dungeon real quick. Unless, Obram, you can think of a dungeon that you know of that you want to run. Bye, deuce. <laughs> the gamer me says that's his 15 minutes of EverQuest 2 fame right there. That's right. You were famous. <laughs> You're famous now. Uh, Obram says I haven't really done any dungeons on Antonia Bell. Well, cool. Then this will be fun for us all. So let me go ahead and start loading this up. And what I'm going to do is stop this here so we can post that. We'll post our visit um, to Deuce's place as its own separate cast there. All right, so let me let me start a new one.